One of the messages I get quite often is something along the lines of I really love Nikal Harpa, I really want one and I don't know where to get one, can you please help me? Emily Valskan here. In this video I'm gonna try to give you some tips to help you find your Nikkal Harpa, especially your first one. Nikkal Harpa is not a common instrument at all and it's pretty hard to find. Um, if you live in Sweden it's gonna be kind of okay but if you live in other parts of the world, especially outside of Europe and Northern America, it's gonna be quite tricky. It's not impossible though, I know people like in many different countries, including very far away from Sweden, who have got a nickel harpa, it's just gonna take more time. So where you live is gonna be the main parameter for finding an instrument. This video is not gonna be me just listing builders in every region I think of. Um, I thought this could be just very boring, <laughs> so I did what I thought was the best possibility, like the best solution. I just created a new page on my website and added all the infos I have of all the builders I know and also workshops and bows and teachers, many teachers. So I'm gonna link this page in the description and please visit it and you have many infos there. Of course this list is totally not complete, there are many more builders, many many more teachers probably many more courses as well. It's meant to evolve with time. So if you know more builders, more teachers, more courses, everything, um, please tell me so I can add the infos. And also I'm gonna add infos about every builder, like what they build exactly. Is it just traditional Swedish three rows nickel harpas? Or do they also build like old types of nickel harpas? Or do they build more modern stuff? Do they build four rows? Do they build octave nickel harpas? And also some uh, characteristics of their specific sound. Like, is it more big instruments, small instruments, uh, weird instruments, <laughs> this kind of stuff. So for that as well, you can help if you know that one builder has a tendency to build more like small instruments or with very earthy tone, for example. Please tell me, please give me adjectives as well. So this page is in the description and in this video I'm gonna talk more about tips about when you're getting your instrument. So where you can find one and um, like the, the path you're gonna follow a little bit, the different possibilities you have to find an instrument and also what you should consider when buying one and so on. So my very first tip is networking. So when you get interested in Nikkal Harpa, really find your local Nikkal Harpa nerds. Um, you can start on the internet, that's just the best start. You can check on Facebook, there are many Facebook groups for Nikkal Harpa. There is Nikkal Harpa UK, there is a German speaking group for Nikkal Harpa, there is Svensk Folkmusik, which is general about Swedish folk music, but there are Nikkal Harpas as well there. Um, there is the Nikkal Harpa, the American Nikkal Harpa Association. So they are in different languages and in different parts of the world. Main languages are Swedish and English, um, but there are also other languages. And if there is no group in your language, why not creating it? It might attract people who have difficulties with English or Swedish, for example. Also, a tip I absolutely want to give you. There is this group on Facebook, which is called Folkmusik Shop or Sell. It's basically a group for like selling second hand folk instruments in Sweden. I'm gonna link it in the description. There are not many Nikkal Harpas, but sometimes there is one passing by and they are usually pretty cheap. So, good advice. But what I think is even more important than that is actually to find the people in your region. Even if you are far away from Sweden, there are probably people around you who are, or who could be, interested in Scandi folk music and in Nikkal Harpa. So Nikkal Harpa is of course your goal, but also think a bit wide. Try to find people who like Scandinavian folk music. And why not as well Celtic music, like Celtic fiddlers, there are probably some around you. Or people who like other type of folk instruments. 
maybe there is someone playing like Rebecca, Gertie, Hammer Dulcimer, um, some kind of, I don't know, horns or something. And they might know places where there are folk instruments, markets or builders or online markets, something like that. So they are also of good help. Think also about dancers. I know, for example, a bunch of people from the US who are going every year or second year to Sweden and Norway to go to dance courses. And um, they organize a trip, so maybe you can join such a group of people going to dance in Scandinavia, or maybe you can ask them to bring an instrument from you, or to have maybe they have some contacts for Nika Harpa, something. So really, networking is super important. Maybe there is someone who is selling a Nika Harpa not far away from your place. So that can be really, really precious. I was really surprised to see how many people there are not so far away from me who are dealing with nickel harpas somehow, in a way or another. So really networking. Sometimes those people are hard to find. <laughs> I mean, you can Google your region and then nickel harpa and not find anything. I've done that a long time before I found people around me. Um, there are a few tips that I can give you. The first one is to check if there is any Scandinavian band touring internationally which is coming to your region. I mean, first one I think of is Vesen, obviously, but there are other ones. For example, Josefina Polson, who plays Nico Harpa, has been going to Australia touring. She's a super good contact. I think this is important because then you can contact the organizers get in touch with them, because if they organize such a concert, it means that they have interest in this music. And it, they mean, it means also that they know that other people do, otherwise the concert would be just empty. So this is a good way to find other folkies, other Nikaharpa interested people. Also, if really you don't get your hand on any Nikaharpa or Swedish folk music group of people, think about the Swedish expatriates. Because very often in big cities there is a group for Swedish expatriates and they will gather and they will like celebrate Midsommar and Lucia and some like traditional Swedish stuff together. And it can also be in a church. Check also Swedish churches. Even if you're not religious, that's not a question. Just because they might have very good contacts. Because for those celebrations, they need music. So very often they will know at least one fiddler or one singer who can sing the traditional songs or play some tunes that are good for kids to dance around the Midsommar pole, for example. So contact the Swedish expats. This is probably gonna help, even if they're not a lot into folk music, but a bit. Um, so that's about networking. I think it's really important. Then I want to talk about peakiness and parameters. What I mean by that is, when you find Nickel Harpa, what should you consider for buying it or not? How picky you should be? Basically, you have several possibilities depending on uh, where you live and how hard it is to find Nickel Harpa. If you're in Sweden, please be picky because you have choice. If you are in the rest of Europe, well, it's not that hard to find a Nickel Harpa either. But if you live far away, very far away, you have more or less two options. Or you look for the instrument the closest to your place, and then you're not picky, because if you find a crappy one but it's close to your place, you're happy anyways. <laughs> and the other possibility is to organize something with Scandinavia, or further away, or close to Sweden in some way. So either you're going there, or someone is going for you or something, and you're having contacts in Sweden, and then you're putting already a lot of effort and money in the trip and so on, so please be picky and also find a good instrument, basically. Um, but then, not really depending on the parameters, um, there are other... no, not really depending on where you live, there are other parameters as well. For example, uh, how much money you want to put in your instrument. Also, are you a beginner or are you someone who is already experienced with instruments? Are you sensitive to the quality of the sound or do you just want to have fun? What is your goal with your instrument? Do you just want to have fun with yourself? Sunday afternoon, three tunes on your nickel harpa, super simple, just for yourself. You don't need a super top quality instrument. Maybe if you want, but it's not needed. 
But if you're a professional a musician and you really want a good sound or something, if you have any goals with this instrument, maybe be more picky. Um, also, think about parameters. What I call parameters is how big is the instrument, um, how heavy it is, which kind of features it has. Is it having like a four rows keyboard or three rows? What do you exactly want? Do you want a bigger instrument? Do you Are you playing cello, for example? Do you want a similar instrument? Then consider an octave nickel harpa. Um, what do you want to play on your instrument? Do you want to play blue notes, like quarter tones? There are some nickel harpas with quarter notes. Very few, but there are some. Um, yeah, do you want to play accompaniment? For which instrument? Which type of music? This kind of stuff is gonna sh like decide how picky, like how much money you should put in your instrument and which type of instrument you should find as well. Uh, I'm gonna go back to how to choose the typical instrument for yourself a bit later on in the video. Now I just want to talk about if you're a beginner, I think, well, if you want to put a lot of money in a new, incredible, beautiful instrument, you are totally free to do so. But my advice is to not be too picky if you're a beginner, especially if you're not fully sure about Nicola Harpa. Maybe you love it now, but maybe you're not gonna be so enthusiastic about playing it. It can happen. Sometimes we get like very crazy about a new thing, but in the end it's not really our thing. Or maybe you're already playing other instruments and you don't really have time for it. Or maybe you're just gonna not like playing it so much, or maybe it's gonna be too complicated, or I don't know. Um, I've seen a couple of people who try to improve their technique by buying better instruments, like more expensive instruments, and like upgrading their instruments all the time. And I'm just thinking, this is not working. You can't like change the instrument in the hope of like playing better yourself. There is a question of technique, of progress to be made, that is just up to practice and time. And even if you have a super good instrument, it's not gonna help you for technique. But the bow is. <laughs> so I would say be very, very picky about the bow, more than about the nickel harp by itself if you're a beginner. Because if you have a bad bow from the start, you're gonna learn bad techniques. And then you will have twice the work because you will have to de-learn the bad habits and learn good ones instead. So be picky about the bow, really, I insist every, like, very, very much on that, every minute I can. But the instrument, I mean, it's a nickel harp, it has written and strings, it's sounding nice anyways, in a way, kind of. Of course there are better instruments, but it's not gonna solve technical difficulties just because it's better. So that's what I mean about pickiness as well, uh, depending on your level as well. If you're in a place where it's not too difficult to find a nickel harpa, to buy a nickel harpa, I mean, you can absolutely have a quite a cheap, crappy instrument in the start, and when you have played for a little while, you know what you want, you know you're playing better, you know the, the, that world better, you have better contacts, and you can get a better one and sell the first one, or keep it, I don't know, <laughs> as you want. Yeah, so think about this kind of stuff. Also, one last thing, when you find a nickel harpa, be careful to not be just tricked by the looks. We are all like that. I mean, I also have my own aesthetic ideas. I like a certain kind of things and not others. I want aesthetics of an instrument to be more like this and less like that and so on. But be a bit careful um, about that because what is important is the sound and the practicality of the instrument. Maybe the instrument is not really pretty to your eyes, but it's really sounding nice it's really matching your size and your like practical parameters of your body and it's really okay then it's a really good instrument for you maybe it's not the prettiest but sound is way more important so be careful to not put extra value to like i don't know little decorations or paintings or prettiness basically beauty of the instrument i think for me a beautiful instrument is one that is sounding good first Keep that in mind. Now, I want to talk about what you are gonna check when you're buying a nickel harpa. This can be tricky, especially if you don't know nickel harpa yet very well, uh, or if you don't know instruments, or bowed instruments, or key, uh, strings instrument very well yet. Um, 
If you are not sure about your own eyes and skills about checking an instrument, I highly recommend you to have someone with you who knows. So another player, someone who knows a bit about that, or maybe asking a violin builder. I mean, they usually have big eyes when they see a nickel harpa, but they still know how it works, so they can help. So if you are going to try an instrument in person, it's the best way. Really, if you can try an instrument in person before buying, it's the best way. So you can really try that it's working, you can play on it, you can check it on every angle and everything. And take a person with you if you're not sure of your own skills for that. Especially if you don't play yet. Take a Nikapa player with you if you can. That's much better. A teacher can be a good, good idea. A violin person is probably the closest to a Nikola Harpa nerd that you can find. Uh, but also probably a guitar person can check as well if it's working, if it looks okay, not broken. Um, if you're gonna buy without trying your instrument in person, be careful. I think it's very, very important in that case to ask for many, many pictures of the instrument and especially of the body to check if there are no cracks. You don't want any crack on the table, nor on the sides, nor on the back. It's really important that you check that the instrument is playable and also ask for having the pictures with all strings on with full tension. If there are one, two strings missing, that's fine, but so you can check that the instrument can hold the pressure. I'm a bit keen on that because um, in Sweden there are like different types of instruments and like some are better than others but there is a type of instrument that is the decorative instrument that is hanging on the wall for a while and has been hanging on the wall for a while and maybe someone or in a box and someone wants to sell it and those instruments are usually not really playable and sometimes they are built by good builders and you can maybe do something out of them you can maybe renovate them but sometimes they are just they have just been built by the uncle or someone and um, in their f spare time and it was not a super good instrument in the start and as it was not super good it has not been played a lot and then it's hanging on the wall for like years. Those instruments are usually crappy <laughs> and those are the cheap ones. Um, so be a bit careful about that. I think also one super important thing is to ask for sound samples if you can but also to ask when was the instrument last played and in which circumstance. Because there is a big difference between an instrument that has been played three weeks ago by someone who was playing at least once or twice a week, playable instrument, and an instrument that has been built by someone in the family and then played by the grandma two times a year for birthday and Christmas and the rest of the time being in a box and grandma died five years ago and the instrument hasn't been played since. Then the instrument is maybe not that playable, so you should be really careful. Also, if it's an instrument from a school and many kids have played on it, and maybe they were not very careful, you have to be careful then <laughs> about buying it. You can have luck and find a very good instrument, but one never knows, maybe it's not that good. So yeah, there are some things that are fine if they are missing, those can be taken off like very easily especially when it's dry so if there are some missing that's no big deal you can still buy the instrument um, also if there are some keys missing if it's just one two or three keys it's okay they're not that hard to make and if the rest of the instrument is fine maybe that's your chance to have a very very good instrument you just have a bit of work to do same with the pegs. The guitar pegs are very easy to, to like to find, it's the easiest part. And even the big ones, you may you might have to just make a new one, but that's not a big deal. You can ask a violin builder or someone who works with wood in general to make you those pieces, so that's fine. Um, the, the bridge is more important. You, the bridge should not be too like bend, bent, and also the tailpiece should be in good shape. So this is more important, and the body as well. The keyboard, what is important is that it's pretty much in the axis. Uh, that is not like going completely on the side or something. But if there are some small pieces missing there, that's fine. That, that can be fixed, really. Also, um, if you happen to buy like online or something like that, and the instrument is going to be sent to you and you live in a place where it's kind of hard to get like strings or something, just ask the person to put on new strings and maybe like ex an extra set of strings already, so you have them, and it's gonna last you some years. Yep. Um, now, 
let's talk about price. This is a question I also get a lot, which is basically how much should a nickel harpa cost? What is a fair price for a nickel harpa? So I'm going to try to answer this question. So I'm going to talk in euros. Um, I'm going to talk about four categories. The first category is if it's under 600 euros. There I would say don't buy, no. Uh, a nickel harpa under 600 euros is probably a bad one. You might have luck and find one that is fine, but usually it's this kind of instrument that are used for decorations. And if you can try it and it sounds okay and it works fine, then why, why not? But if you can't try it, if it's like online that you're buying or something, just don't, just no. Then you have the instruments that are in between 600 to 1000 500 euros. Those are a bit like... I'm not sure. Basically, there you can have instruments that are very very crappy, but you can also be lucky and find instruments that are closer to the high end of the this group, but that are actually very fine. So it's a bit depending, like if you can try the instruments once more and it sounds okay, that's fine. But if you can't try it, yeah, you can try to take the risk. If you're really desperate or if you just need a, like a cheap second instrument, that's fine. It's really a question of luck. I would not trust that much that price, but sometimes one never knows. Then you have the instruments in between 1,500 and like 4,000 euros. And I would say that is the normal price for Nickel Harpa. It's in this kind of range that I personally aim for my instruments. Just if you want to know, my nickel harpa was at 3,200, more or less. Um, it depends a lot on the builder and on some features like how many rows on the keyboard and this kind of stuff. But it's the builder that is the main um, parameter there. In this range you find really nice builders and you find very playable instruments. I would say here is also where you can really trust for an instrument you can't try in person, but that is gonna be sent to you or something like that. So yeah, this category is like normal price for Nicole Harpa, I would say. And then you have more than 4,000 euros. And those are like luxury instruments. Um, they are usually from very well-known, renowned builders, such as like Espion Hockmark, or maybe they have special features like, I don't know, a fifth string or very specific design or something. Maybe it's like Octave Nickel Harpa. Maybe it's vintage Nickel Harpa from Exalstrom. Like, those are very expensive. I think the maximum I've seen was like 8,500 or something like that. They are probably more expensive instruments. Those are really luxury. I don't think it's necessary to aim for that to have a good instrument. As said, the previous category is really fine already. But if you have the money and you really want something fine or special, why not? Then there are two more things I want to talk about. Um, the first one is renting instrument. Renting an instrument. Is that a good idea? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, especially if you are not sure about playing Nikal Harpa or you don't have any money yet for buying a Nikal Harpa or something. And if there is a possibility for you to rent an instrument from a builder or from someone who just has a couple of nickel harpas to rent, um, that's a really good idea. That's actually what I did personally. I was not sure I was gonna really play nickel harpa, I was already playing violin a lot. So I just rented one, this one. And I loved it so much that I knew I had to get a nickel harpa and I finally bought it. But it took me a bit of time and it was really good to have this time to think. So if you have the possibility of renting, definitely go for it. Um, and then the question of choosing your Nickel Harpa. If it's like the Nickel Harpa you're buying, first one or not, it might be a bit difficult to know which one you want because there are so many builders, many styles, possibilities, options and so on. My first tip is to like make a list of what is important for you. So the parameters I talked about. If you're a tiny, maybe think of a small instrument. It's not the 
absolute parameter. I have a very tiny friend who plays Octave Nicol Harpa, much better than I do, and I'm very long, but it's it's this kind of stuff. Like if you have pain on your back, just get a light instrument maybe. Or if you know you're gonna play low stuff, get four rows. Tip about four rows. This instrument, this very Nicol Harpa, had a three rows keyboard before, and I got it changed, this one, yeah. I got it changed for a four rows by Jean-Claude Condé. This is something that is possible to do. If you already have a Nicol Harpa that you really like, but it has three rows and you want a four rows, most Nicol Harpas can handle the change from, four rows, from three rows keyboard to four rows keyboard. It's just gonna be a bit of work. Don't do it yourself, ask the builder to do it, uh, because there is a bit of adjusting with the bridge and with like the height of um, the upper saddle and everything. But it's very possible to do, and then you don't have to change the instrument, the whole instrument. So, and yes, it's also less expensive. So this is something to consider. Also, having just a better keyboard, you can just change the keyboard and not just the whole instrument, especially if the sound is good. Um, but yeah, choosing your instrument. Uh, think about also special features you might want. I already talked about that. Do you want a fifth string or do you want quarter tones or something special? And then try to see which builders are making instruments in that direction. And also make a list of the qualities of the sounds that you generally like and that you would like to have. Do you want a sound that is loud? Do you want quiet? Do you want bright? Do you want earthy sound? Do you want more like an old type sound? Or more like a violin sound? Or very clean sound? Like think about this kind of stuff. Also, what I recommend you is to make a list of like kind of 10 Nicaragua players that you really like the sound of. And I really mean the sound, not the playing style nor the repertoire, but really the sound of like how they sound like. And for this really use good headphones and not the speakers of the laptop. <laughs> and make this list and check which builder has made their Nicaragua ask them if you don't know or maybe you can find in the information somewhere and then you will maybe see a pattern maybe not maybe it's just different types of nickel harpas but maybe six or seven of them are from the same builder or the same style of instrument so that's a good sign about which builder you should contact to uh, build the nickel harpa you want so i think this is pretty much it I have tried to go through all points I could think of for this topic. It's, I know it's hard to find a Mikkel Harpa. I hope this helps. Um, as usual, if you have any questions, comments, remarks, critics, feel free to write to me. Also, if you have any infos for the list on my website, please tell me so we can help each other. It will always be free access on my website. I'm never gonna sell this. This is really something I do to help people because I know which hassle it is to find any Harpa, especially outside of Sweden. So if you have um, adjectives about a specific builder, like how the Nikaharpa is sounding, like describing the sound, or infos about what type of Nikaharpa they're building, or about other workshops that are not on the list yet or something, please, please send that to me. Thank you very much for everyone. And um, also, if you like my videos, if you would like to support me, you can support me on Patreon. I already have a couple of people there and I'm so grateful for them. I mean, every time I get a new patron, uh, I get extremely emotional. I'm like, oh, people are so nice to me, they like my work. It's it's really 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 important for me it's really meaning a lot and i'm getting highly emotional every time um i haven't been very active yet on net i'm trying to like <laughs> i'm trying to post old things concerning the old videos but i'm gonna soon be done with catching up with the old stuff and we're gonna be like on time with today with the videos uh, also i know i've been not very regular in posting lately i have been having a very complex time in my life and I've been traveling as well like you saw the last video in the greenhouse that was during my travels uh, but from now on I'm gonna be a bit more regular I hope <laughs> I am pushing myself to be um, yeah as usual questions anything please tell me any support is really appreciated 
thank you very much to my patrons and thank you for you for having watched up until now. If you have an ikal harpa or if you play another instrument, have very much fun playing. If you don't have one yet, don't get desperate, it's gonna work, I promise. Just be patient and keep on trying. Till next time, folkies. Goodbye.